What we're going to do is I'm going to try to introduce you to the easiest way I have ever found to do a tree. Now this is after over 40 years of painting and I'm going to use this portion of my demonstration panel just to give you the opportunity to practice a tree. And as an introduction to treeness, I'm going to reiterate, we have three. We have three devices to create visual interest in the painting. They are value, hue, and detail. When it comes to doing a tree, we cannot do a tree as detailed as what we see when we look at them. So we're forced to simplify. So we're going to simplify this tree into threes. We're going to do the middle value, middle color. Then we're going to do the darker value, darker color. And then we're going to do the lighter value, lighter color as our foundation. And then we can build on that with a lighter light and darker dark and tweak it with other colors. In doing a tree, we have to have a number of things that come together harmoniously. The lights, the darks, the warms, the cools, the detail versus the absence of detail. In a violin, you have to have the right tension on the strings, the right tension on the bow, the right angle on the bow, the right speed on the bow to get the desired effect. Well, it's the same thing with a paintbrush. You have to have the right amount of paint, the right color, the right value, the right brush, the right amount of paint on the brush, the right amount of pressure on the brush as you apply the paint, and if there's a breakdown in any of these areas, you're going to have a hard time doing a tree. It is a learned skill, just like playing a violin. No one ever did an expert job playing a Paganini sonata, you know, within a week of picking up a violin. No one ever does a beautiful tree within a week of picking up a brush and playing with their colors. Trees are something that are the nemesis to a lot of people because trees are so challenging to do and the best way to do them is simply. And if you do trees simply, I'm not saying it's easy, but the most convincing tree is a tree that has been done simply and it's taken me years to learn how to do a tree simply. Right? So, with that being said, I'm going to start with a middle value, middle hue color. Now, remember that shadow that we were doing on, on our painting just a few minutes ago? I just added a little bit more raw sienna to that color. And I've got a middle value, middle hue green that is an earthy green. A tree that is seen in the typical graveyard is pruned and it just stands so perfect and it is just positively boring. We want to do trees that are visually interesting. And a visually interesting tree is a tree that shows that nature has been both kind and cruel to it. Let the tree tell a story about the kindness and cruelty of nature. That means the tree is going to be open and airy so that a bird can go in and land without fear of life or limb. Another thing about trees, we don't want them to be perfectly manicured, perfectly trimmed, etc. We want them to look random. When I say random, we don't want arms and legs sticking straight out or straight up. The human eye and the human brain gravitates to diagonals as being a more interesting shape than perfect verticals, perfect horizontals. So when we do a tree, we want to hedge the odds in our favor. So we start with some diagonals. Now, I made a statement a few minutes ago. The right amount of paint on the brush, the right angle of the brush relative to the surface of the canvas, the right amount of pressure on the brush, 
and a diagonal. Instead of going horizontal or perfectly vertical, the human brain and the human eye gravitate to diagonals a little bit more so. They find diagonals more interesting than perfect verticals or perfect horizontals. Do you see the diagonal nature here? Diagonal nature here? Diagonal nature there? Now I have just produced the number two hue and the number two value of my tree. Now I'm going to go to the shadow. I'm going to take burnt sienna over here on the side of my pool. I'm going to take some dark green and get a nice dark green. I'm going to use enough of my pool to get it a green that appears like it's going to work well the light there. The source is coming from the upper left in our photograph. So I'm going to have the light source coming from the upper left on this tree so that we get the practice. I have just created my number th three value and my number three hue. That means I need to stay inside my tree with my number three value and hue. Now, I want you to notice, when I did my number two, I kind of did it with a scribbly magic stroke. Now I'm going to bear down with a shorter stroke and a more intentional stroke for the shadows. Now, where would I see shadows on my tree? I'm going to see them on the underside of some of these forms. Where's the underside? It's if the light source is from the upper left, the lower right is going to be in shadow. The lower right hand portion of the, the tree is going to be in shadow. And I'm going to be more intentional about my brush strokes. I don't want my, my tree to grow. I don't want it to grow to a point where it just grows off the edge of my paper. I have kind of, in that first scribble, I have given the proportions and dimensions of the tree. I might go out a little bit here and there. And I want you to notice that I'm using short little strokes, and they are intentional strokes, softening the edge on the shadow side and the underside of these forms. Short, tiny little strokes where I have rocked up on the edge or corner. Now, this brush is a little bit worn out, but you can do it with a new brush, and it's all in the angle that you hold your brush, and it's short little strokes. I can even put some dark shadows towards the center of some of these forms as I put them into the underside of some of these forms. Now, I don't want to overdo this. I don't want to overdo too many darks. I want to put the darks where I would intentionally or intellectually know that I would see them. So now I have divided my tree into two values and two hues. I have the number two value and the number two hue. I have the number three value and the number three hue. Now I need to do my number one. So I still have this portion of my pool. Now for the first time, I'm going to grab some white. I'm going to grab some white. I'm going to grab some of my yellow. I'm going to grab some raw sienna. And I'm going to grab some turquoise. And I'm going to use enough raw sienna to make that green earthy. I'm going to earth up that green with the raw sienna, there, there's a nice earthy green, and I'm going to put a touch of this orange in there. Oops, I got too much orange. I'm going to put a touch of this orange in with that mixture, and I'm going to test this color now around the center of the tree. Why the center of the tree? I want to see how it looks in the environment of my number two and number three colors. Does it fit? It's not bad. I'm going to make it a little lighter, and I'm going to use a little more yellow and a little bit more of that orange. 
I'm going to test it up here. That looks pretty good. Now, you see, I'm still using a very intentional short stroke. Now, on the light side of the tree, where the light is hitting, and on the upper left-hand portion of the tree that is catching the light, the upper left-hand portion of some of the forms that are catching light, I am putting this highlight. Don't get too solid. Now, it looks, it might look like I'm dabbing, but I'm putting a short stroke everywhere I go. Now, I can change these colors a little bit. Every time I go to the palette, I may change that color just a little bit. Now, I'm not going to put a trunk on this tree because I don't need a trunk yet. There's my first effort on that tree. And I now have number two, number three, number one. I'm going to go back to my number three and I'm going to break up just a few of these lights with a short little stroke. Where's get That got a little bit too much right there, so I'm going to break that up. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of this orange and a little bit burnt sienna. Create a little visual interest by throwing in a little other color. Just in a few places. And there's more that we're going to do. But this is the introduction. This is a practice tree on a practice panel. Now I'm going to show you how you use the same panel to do your second practice. Now you do it again. <laughs> 